Alex Lanier are back with another creative mission. Now, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and click that post notification bell below because you don't want to miss any of these videos. So I have a lot of creative content coming and you need to be here for that. So I'll see you guys inside. All right, so I'm in 3ds Max and here I'm getting my models ready for the image. And I like to, to recycle old models that I've already had like this Airstream model I've had for a while now. And I'm just manipulating it to kind of fit my vision for this image, connecting it to the hot air balloon. Um, here, I'm getting ready to drop the tires um, as they would do if the Airstream was lifted up, lifted up into the air to give that, you know, more of a realistic feel for the image. Just setting up this camera angle right now getting that together because the balloon will be floating up in the air with the airstream so I want to make sure the camera angles right and here are some neon lights um, I forgot where I got these from I think I might have got them from turbo squid but these neon lights um, I want to have these connected to the airstream and connecting those right now and making sure that everything is lined up here and at this phase right here I want to make sure the textures are on point so now I have a few pre-made textures that I've created and I want to make sure the mapping is correct and I want to make sure all these textures are correct because this is going to be a more of a close-up image. So I want to make sure these reflections and textures are all on point. So here I'm just individually going in and selecting each object, applying different textures to each object. I have a brushed metal texture. I have different reflective metal textures. I have a rubber texture for the tires and here you know I'm just applying individual metal textures to the, the neon sign and here I, I was thinking about putting a background with the night image that I was going to use and render it as one image but it didn't quite work out so as you see as you will see I'll, I'm gonna be taking that back out but you know you gotta try things to see if, you know what works what doesn't work but I you know I wanted to try to get more ref, you know reflections from that background on the airstream as you can see right here it just you know it just becomes way too dark so I try another option too. I try dome right here. And this also doesn't come out the way I want it. So, you know, it's just trial and error. But ultimately, I'm just going to use the background in Photoshop. So, and here I was thinking about adding some kind of strap that connects all the way around the air streaming and hooks up to the, the hot air balloon but I really didn't like the way the straps wrap around the air stream so I took those out it's looking pretty good one of the final render samples just to see how the reflections turned out Photoshop. So now I'll just bring in the, the 3D model, placing it in in there just to make sure everything fits up. I'm trying to get this background. I want the background to be more blown out than the foreground so things pop from the background. So I want the actual airstream and the hot air balloon to be darker than the actual night sky, the moonlight from the from the night sky. Now you want, you want to make sure you add the proper lighting to your 3D model. Because if you don't, everything will look off. So you want to, you want to make sure the 
lighting is great. And of course, as in all of my images, I use the curves. I use the curves for most of my glow. And it just works for me. It just, the colors, it keeps the texture and it doesn't blow, you know, my objects out to the point where you don't see the texture and the colors just stay nice and vibrant. So I like using the curves. And right now I'm just painting in my glows. So what I'll do is I'll blow out an area and the color of the glow that I want mask that glow completely out and repaint in the glow in certain areas that I want. So here I wanted the glows to kind of hit the glass. Now here are the glows for the neon lights. This is the, the base layer of the glows. Now I'm going to go in and add a secondary glow, which is more of a fade that bounces off onto the other objects. And I just repeat this process until it, you know, it looks the way I want it to look. And I do this for all of my glows. Just painting those in. And I might have, you know, 20 to, to 30 different glow layers, depending on, you know, how many different different objects I have in my image that that need glow effects on right here I'm just adding in a little reflection from the actual sky of the stars so now I'm just masking out some of the stars that I don't need you don't need the stars to be evenly reflected through the whole object so I'm just kind of fading in different areas no. masking out few more glows now you know I have to add my haze just a little bit turn the opacity down on it so it doesn't blow out the image too much and I'm adding in some dirt that might have been trapped inside the tires that are just now falling as the airstream lifts up my clouds I have a lot of cloud brushes. These are these are these are brushes that are that are already ready just to paint in and look like clouds. You gotta add your little particles, little dust particles. Little small little fun details that I'm adding in. A few more little shadows. So you don't want things that look too flat since I've added so many highlights. You don't want things to be blown out too much. Now, looks like everything is looks good. All the glows look right. Yeah, I think I'm happy with this one. Thank you guys for watching and make sure to like and subscribe and hit that post notification bell at the bottom. Make sure you don't miss any of these videos because everything will be different. I will be coming with something new every video, so you don't want to miss that. I'll see you guys next time.